Whew. Decompressing a little bit this session. I'm coming hot off of our second D&D session, which... <laughs> some of the funniest shit that's ever happened in D&D &D potentially for me. Uh, I look forward to that, I suppose. Wow. But now I gotta record Disco Elysium, so I might be a little emotionally drained <laughs> from from just living. Uh, <laughs> uh, trying to keep the daily episodes going, though. It's just, uh, I was out doing errands, then came back to, like, a whole conversation with people organizing D&D &D because the normal day wasn't going to work. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is happening. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a neat game. All right, so we found Ruby's drugs. We betrayed our poor, poor driver. That was one of the few friendly people in this game because my other options failed. And uh, maybe I could have pushed past certain things if I took drugs, but hurting that guy's feelings is uh, preferable to taking drugs on this character. I'm trying to clean this asshole up after what he did in the prologue, so... No, no exceptions. That's that's the role play we're doing. That moral code. So now we have more to talk about with Titus. The copper NATO is back. What do you want? Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. He leans back, unruffled. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how to clean your streets. How clean your streets are in precinct 41 kilos. Damn. Oh, get this. Damn it. There we go. The chair wouldn't lock. I'm like, stop it. We'll do that in the meantime. He points south. Did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move the raw ingredients for drugs for t t from <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all fucked up. Funnily enough, I think I'm using Kim's voice as my go-to voice for my D&D character now. My tabaxi sorcerer thief. I think that's what I've just landed on at this point. Uh, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from... T from Terminal B to Jamrock. We know Ruby was the driver. We know that's your affiliation with her. He taps on his notebook. Detective, you want to deliver the coup de grace? No, do the honor. You've earned it. Nod to the lieutenant. Thank you. He turns to face the man. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the local drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. He rubs his jaw, smiling. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do to get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need... You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place. Of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. He grins, because they're the hardy boys. Ha! Ah. For the good of the community, of course. Yes. But that just sends everyone else to Jamrock, doesn't it? You've just diverted the flow to Jamrock. You've made it our problem. We haven't done anything, but theoretically it has to be someone's problem, so it might as well be yours. He takes a sip of his beer and smiles. Oh my god, he's a villain not here, not only here, but in my home district at the same time. I don't know, the big man says, swirling his beer can. I guess theoretically things don't make me emotional. A theoretical things don't make me emotional. Now, I was sorta of going to get my brewski on. And what about this Ruby? Is she the eighth hardy that runs this thing for you? You sure do love long walks through Theory Town, don't you? The big guy asks, straightening his cap. Well, I'm thirsty now. Thirsty for beer. Got any less theoretical questions, cop? 
This was good. Every little piece helps the big puzzle together. I want to go over a few things about Ruby. Do you know what she's doing with the Ulan frequencies? The what now? I got no idea. He looks around. Boys? She said she's building a... His voice is very quiet. A pale emitter. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing ULAN frequencies into pale something. I don't know more. Well, there you have it. Pale something. Titus puts an end to it. Why did we start with pale emitter, then reduce it to like a vaguer term as if we didn't hear the first one? Thanks for the review, Titus. He sighs heavily. Anything else you want, cop? I'm gonna take off now. You do that. It's getting a little late. We might be reaching the end of a day once again. It happens. Still, we're getting down to it. Uh, let's deal with Everard. Let's see if Everard's around and try interacting with him again. Because, uh... What was it? Um, Joy specifically is known for sticking around all night, so I don't have a time limit on her. But I actually don't know how long Everart will stick around. I haven't been here for a while. Thought I was getting into deep shit before. What's going on over here? Now we, we've done this. Yeah. We're all familiars with that. Nothing to follow up on with the phone. Well, I might be a little over curious with certain things because it's uh, it's been a long time. So I don't remember this environment very well. Only came here once. composite eye of halogen lights watches you, emitting a low buzz. Oh yeah. That was the big crane. Interactive still. Gah! 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 It's way louder than I was ready for. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything else inside the container. Heh. <laughs> Out of curiosity. I might as well check to see if anything new has come up. Oh, hey, mister! I need to be back to talk with Olea here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And a lot of folks really did keep coming back. I had some questions for you, if that's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom with us if not shared. And the old Leo's always, always up for sharing. It's nothing. He just sings container over and over again. Of course. This is not a fishing rod, is it? It's... What is it? Why did the thought end there? Huh. Alright, you son of a bitch. I would like my gun back. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you're already sat on that chair. Okay. Weird thing to say out loud. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. 
His face turned serious. My best men are on it. They are turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. He winks at you. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Yeah. If there's a point of no return coming, I don't really want to go past it without, without my gun. Partly because I don't want to see who else it might end up in the hands of, if that might be plot relevant. And also, I, might, I don't want to be in a situation where, like, Kim is just completely on his own in an important situation because I don't have it at all. It could go super bad. Because we're dealing with a situation where there already has been a shooting. That's our suspect. Hold on. Could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Wait, my gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? Yes, thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed, he makes air quotes, factored in that you pawned it. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. You're, you focus on what's important, building our relationship for the good of Martinez. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Does this mean that if I do things, you... Uh, do things for you, I will get my gun back. Damn it, Harry, that's exactly what it means. He turns to the lieutenant. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course, the lieutenant replies, replies dryly. I understand. We help you, you help us. I'm looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady Brew. There are so many moving parts in this operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. He reconsiders. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you are talking about, and he doesn't care, either. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Valson Crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. He says with the fondest of smiles. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. Ah, uh, yes, your side investigation. Thank you. He adjusts his glasses. You've got some spirit clearing up phony drug accusations alongside the murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now let's talk real business. Level up. <laughs> Actually, Reva called... Revachel doesn't have a mayor. He refuses to discuss it further. It's probably just a small nuisance to him. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that, then. I'm reconsidering opening that door you asked me to open. Perhaps it will help me somehow. A fantastic change of heart, Harry. He rubs his nose. Go talk to Manana down by the gates. He'll brief you and give you the key. And just like that, it's happening. The roller coaster's moving. Too late to take it back now. Just open one little door and... You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything else we should discuss? Everard, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. See you soon, Debadur. All right, do googling words again, because that's what we do. The bad do. I should translate. Oh, that yeah, papa. Papa.
Have I? I think I did this. Longshoreman. Debardeur. Debardeur. <laughs> Only I do feel much. <laughs> Same soon, de bad de. <laughs> I can't. It's, it's so hard to try to pronounce strange words while also doing a dumb voice. <laughs> the big man raises his hand in farewell. Just kidding, but not too much. Longshoreman. He called me a longshoreman. I can't tell if he's insulting me or not. It's too obscure. So you want me to open some door, sending the signal that the law people are on his on his side. It's a flex. It's a power move, which is uh. Nope. Oh. Rhetoric impossible. Persuade the door to open. Oh my god! All right, let's fucking commit. We might as well dress up before I fuck up. Uh, rhetoric is a. Yeah, it's one of my good stats. It's a blue one. That's what I thought. Do -do 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 -do. I've collected so many items. The reward is that I have more flexibility on my stats, but the downside is that I have to do this <laughs> to do that. Am I wearing my bonus? Yeah, I'm wearing my anti-empathy shirt right now. I don't even remember putting that on. Maybe I've already maximized my rhetoric, specifically. Rhetoric. My only bonus. I've also got plenty of points, yeah. So I can try again, too. Okay. What? Plus one point for being erratic yet thorough. Plus one point for been in the world for two days. Plus one point for been in this world for many days. Plus one point for precarious world, and plus one for ice, uh, ice, icosahedral die set sirens. Precarious world gave me this one? That's the one that changes my thresholds? Yeah. And that one affects this thing specifically. Interesting. Should I be worried? Hip. You fucker. You're back before the cargo door. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Why are you trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because ph getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Uh, because what wasn't an option? The lieutenant looked startled. Using my body over my wits? Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. No, we're getting philosophical right the fuck now with my amazing rhetoric. Hurt. Come on, man. And as it's always been, it's impossible to open a door with rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. No. You can't defeat me this way. I have the power. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello? Is there anyone in there? The door remains silent. That this fight, detective? A wry smile crosses the lieutenant's face. Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. What the fuck is that fate? Mega rich light bending guy. <laughs> From deep within the container, a voice. Ahoy! Come on in! The smile disappears. You can't be serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. You can be dead serious. <laughs> oh my god. Light bending guy, you're not joking. Wow, and that explains his avatar. What the fuck, man? Is this a fourth wall break? Are you the developer? Is that what we're doing? Oh my god. 
The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of... Capital. Oh my god, he's so rich that he bends light. The feeling causes all the hairs in your body to stand on attention, like soldiers preparing for review. Squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended. Distorted. An echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Wow. Welcome. Come in. Make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not able to better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, but yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now. He claps his hands together. What can I do for you, gentlemen? What's... Uh, what you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question in such a long time. There's genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustem Diodor, Diodor, Diodore. Alright. Pronounce Rustem. How to pronounce Rustem Gajlir? Why is that the first thing that comes up? That's weird. Shut up. So it is Rustam. That's that's straightforward, but Dio Diodore? This is probably not worth obsessing over. But I'll always hear about it, and it, the results are iffy. And pronounce in French. Yes. Diodore. Diodore. Rustam Diodore. Because <laughs> it's fucked because I start... Then I go with the inflection of the particular person who said it, and it's a mess. Anyhow, my name is Rustam Diodore. Investigator. Lions and Soldier. An extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodore. I am Lieutenant Kim Kiritsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner, Harrier Dubois. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois, he says warmly. I must admit, the name suits you very well. What are you doing in this container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, and it gives me a lot of time to think. By the way, let me now... Let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? In the very, very early days of colonizing this archipelago, the kingdom of Surens, a precursor of modern sur le Clef, used to own the city of Revachol, Revachalt. Uh, an obscure detail in the bigger picture, but still worth dropping. Why not? Even though Encyclopedia is being a lunatic. We're in Revachol. Formerly a colony of the Kingdom of Serence. Ah, a fellow history buff. I myself am currently reading up on Franconger and Inner Trains. Very interesting stuff. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. Wait, why don't you help them? You've got so much money, it can't make a difference to you. There simply aren't enough hours in a, a day to hand out all the handouts. 
It's like feeding seagulls. There are always more, and they never seem to do anything interesting with it. Except more, except more seagulls. Ew. Ew. Why would I give them money? They don't do anything interesting with it. They just create more seagulls. Fuck. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. So you travel from place to place via shipping container? Smart, no. It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising and extremely what not we extremely high, high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. You think you're the only one with targeted advertising? Also, what? So what? If you if it results in you wanting to do something with your money, then does it, is that ever even an issue? Aren't you just looking for things to throw your money at, at this point? Also, you went through all this effort or at least care about your status enough to be a high net worth individual but then you just isolate yourself in a weird metal box that was in a crane that's a strange way to spend your uh your high net net worth individual life luxury luxury yachts high fidelity portable radio systems pale proof outerwear and so on it just gets a bit middle class after a while a bit bougie Those things all sound pretty nice. Don't get me wrong, they're nice things. But once you achieve a certain level of wealth, your time and mental space become much more important than material goods. If your mental space is more important, then what do you even need the money for? He speaks from the heart. He has very different problems compared to low net worth individuals such as yourself. For example, no problems at all. Yeah, that's about right. Ah, uh, so you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle. What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Just don't tell anyone I told you that. The bending light appears to wink. He's so fucking rich, the laws of physics don't apply to him. They're, uh... This game's not even... This game's not really subtle. <laughs> How'd you become so rich? The man chuckles. To be perfectly blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Grad. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes... Several generations to do that, but all right. That is worth noting, yeah. I th what I can't help but think of is the, uh, that, that website, uh, was it Jeff Bezos or was it Bill, uh, was it Bill, uh, I almost said Bill Smith? What the fuck? Uh, Bill Gates. Is one of those. It might have been both. It might have, might have gotten to choose a billionaire, but I think the idea is the website is you could choose a billionaire and then just spend money for fun it's like buy the buy the 49ers <laughs> like buy this and like buy these massively comically expensive things like entire football teams and all these other massive problems or pay off the debt of the entire country or whatever the fuck and it's like you just keep clicking and you just keep watching as like it's like a drop in the bucket of the giant giant mountain of money because being a billionaire is basically unethical it's just like a nightmare Basically, uh, you just you amass so much wealth that you could single-handedly solve so many problems, but you just kind of don't because you prefer to be continue being a billionaire. And it's like, eh, eh. it's it's all it's always distressing. Don't fucking at me on this or whatever, because it's not super researched, but I remember the, uh... I remember hearing about an interesting system that, about this idea that, like, in Japan, there's just a much tighter ratio between the lowest paid person of a particular company and the highest paid person of the same company. Like, going from the CEO to, like, the janitor and, and so on. And, like... Some and like this is, it was supposed to be that Japan was one of the countries that had one of the best ratios between those two things, and uh, the United States is one of the worst ratios, and that 
is an interesting metric to me. I'm just gonna say that much at least. Like, the idea that like, sure, maybe the people at the very top make more money, but the tighter you can make that ratio, the more ethical the system likely is that everybody is getting some kind of cut and fair share from the actual overall profits and it's not amassing in the hands of a tiny group of people at the very top who frankly themselves oftentimes do relatively little work at that point and meanwhile all the people below them are like <laughs> like this, this this endless network of human suffering because the people that live at that level often employ at a staggering quantity of people just an incredible percentage of the overall population of the world are being employed by those people essentially and uh oftentimes those people are not getting their fair share even though the money does exist to go around and that's not even getting into the the other fucked up elements of like how oftentimes these companies kind of cheated to get where they are in the first place like when you look into the background of Amazon for example it's not even a, like it's not even a matter of just being the most successful and most rich it's like the ways that they compete within capitalism are by cheating at the basic rules that people think of when they think of how capitalism is supposed to be like they didn't really get where they got by offering the best product at the best prices while following the same rules as anybody else. In fact, modern society often allows for uh, companies to basically create no value and not be profitable and not create much of a product and like not like they're not making money. And despite that, somehow the people that run it can run away with like being rich afterwards as a result of the thing that didn't make money in the first place like, like the, uh, an essentially failed enterprise can still make somebody incredibly rich and sometimes uh, it, there's not there's inverse where like the company itself can use external forces such as government grants and so on to like essentially hack their way around the system to outcompete people that don't have the same opportunities as them in their field and then once they get that foothold in they can then continually cheat all the more because yeah what now when now once you're a giant company like uh like amazon like you don't have to uh create a profitable system now when amazon decides to open up a bookstore at its current size in any given city they can just undercut everyone's prices no matter what they can just look at anyone else's prices and make them lower at their store or their website and so on. Uh, and no one can ever compete with that because if Amazon sees anybody try to compete with that, they can just lower their prices more and more and more. Amazon makes so much money that uh, they can just not make them. They can just not make a profit. They can literally specifically decide to drive other people out of business by just offering a, uh, a better price for the same product even if it means a massive loss for them because for them the true true victory is more and more more and more market share so larger and larger companies will specifically operate at a loss because they can afford to they can just operate at a loss until the competition doesn't exist anymore and then once the competing chains go go away then well people have no choice but to buy from the people that essentially drove the other people out of business by cheating and so on all that funness also oh my god my money says three three eight three three five six seven oh seven eight five two seven eight three three point oh oh do I get richer the closer I stand to this guy? This guy does it distort my wallet. If I walk away, will I go back to having l less money? Because that's that's a whole big old pile of fucky, huh? That's a sight. <laughs> I, I I'll have to see. Maybe I'm obscenely rich and now money doesn't matter for the rest of the game, or maybe it's just the ha what happens to my my wallet indicator when I'm standing next to somebody so comically rich uh, but yeah that's the that's my little rant about the thing that was mentioned here is it which was a little bit of a tangent from the other other rant but yeah rhetoric's making a really good point here is that this person's like this person's uh inc incredibly detached from reality which you know is metaphorically shown by the game representing him as somebody who 
the actual laws of physics don't apply to him. That's how fucking beyond the rules he is. This is the, I think this is exactly the intended message of the developers by re re representing him this way. And he's so fucking detached that he, he, he clings to these stupid fucking ideas. These idiot thoughts that people can get away with. Because thing if you're rich enough, you can just be stupid forever. And you'll never realize you're stupid. Because you, your mistakes don't have consequences. It's like fucking... It's like your life's child-proofed, essentially. And you can't ever be dumb enough, basically. And... Part of that is like this is like yeah like oh man I, I'm see I'm actually a genius and a and a better breeding stock because uh, well I did get uh, uh, I did uh, get born with an incalculable wealth that no one else will ever be able to appreciate I did manage to not spend it all so mm, I guess that means that I am superior mm, yes it's like no uh, when you're when you're one of the richest people in the world. Uh, you're so cartoonishly out of whack by several orders of magnitude from the rest of society that making the kinds of spending decisions and mistakes that anyone else could make, even frivolously, uh, cannot dent your wealth. Because the number is so large that it's incomprehensible. It's just, it's, it's a whole fucking different planet. And yeah, that, that, that one website's designed to experiment with that thought process is like what if you tried to buy every single team in the nfl and all these other like things that are inherently uh, incredibly expensive incalculably expensive things that are like so expensive that you and everyone you've ever known could pull your all your money together and you'd never be able to afford that stuff in your entire life and despite that and and that kind of thing there's people out there that could just buy that thing and it just like they wouldn't fucking notice <laughs> like but they're all fucking humans they're all people and somehow, that's a thing. Ugh. Not to mention other fucked up systems like, you know, like how CEOs and other people that control the system w within which they work because they're at the tippy top. They'll like, oh man, I work 80 hours a week and other bullshit, but like, they'll count like their lunch breaks and their fucking like travel time and all these other things as being like, the work hours. Whereas people at the bottom they don't even get paid for their they don't even get paid for their lunch break and they also don't give it they're also not given a lunch so they have to buy they have to buy their lunch out of pocket and that time off is time where they still have to stay near work or at work because they have to go right back to work afterwards but even though their life is being like controlled in that moment it's still time off where they don't get paid for that time and it doesn't count towards their overall time that they're at work even though it is time that they're at work because they're daring to have a lunch and so on and it's like this but like the one of the reasons why high-end high people report massive hours of, of of labor per week is because they cheat at their own fucking uh pay, pay stub they just lie about how much they're working the the uh the equivalent of like uh like, it was like it's, it's like by their own standards they're lying because their own employees aren't allowed to count those kinds of parts of their life as being uh, work but like some of these chuckle fucks will count like their workout time as being at work and doing work it's like no you're doing fitness stuff nice that you can count that as billable hours or whatever the fuck but that's not even remotely reasonable <laughs> This, this stuff kind of struck me because the holidays came by and we were watching the Santa Claus, which is something that I've watched periodically throughout my life, especially when I was a kid. And something that stood out to me is that, like, they were in the middle of this... They're, 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 they're a toy-making company, and they're, like, all these people in suits, and they're all this this, this whole high-end business th setting with all the, the glass offices and everything's very fancy-looking. And, like, in the middle of their business meeting, they all just casually order lunch, and it's these comically... It's, just, it's all this nice, expensive stuff, and you know they're not paying for that stuff. And then they just all sit down, and in the middle of the, and they just stop for like this extended lunch break. That's like the equivalent of eating out at like a at a five star restaurant in the middle of their office. And then they just go back to work. And it's like, you sons of bitches. The subtext here is that you guys are totally, this this you, this totally counts as work for you, huh? This break you're taking, where you just kind of hanging out and having a nice lunch in the middle of the day. It's, it's it's interesting how these things can change over time. Is a 
just your perception of certain things that you just didn't question because you saw it when you were like six and all that. Anyway, but yeah, that's the takeaway of this. The, the developers know what they're writing here. The level this guy is, it would take several generations to do that, but all right. Even rhetoric's full of your shit, and rhetoric is a smart ass. What's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? The man exhales with a whistle. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so damn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. Only because you put- you- you- that's your fault. You did that. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm- I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Yeah. You have an infinite safety net, because your safety net is the entire economy. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. <laughs> there we go. So many people at lower income levels define their entire self-worth based around work. Like your work is your identity. Your job is your identity and your self-worth. And if you're not working enough all the time, then you're not enough of a man or whatever the fuck. And you're not, it's like, how could you do that? It's one of the things that like, people turn their nose up to the idea when they see what I do. Cause it's like, what? Well, that's not a real job because like they need to, everyone needs to have this like cult of work together with each other. And anyone that steps out of line of the exact kind of idea of what a job is, is like a betrayal essentially because like, Work's supposed to be where you get your value as a person, not just in the economy, but also like how you define yourself. And there's this idea that if you're not working, it's like you're a lesser worthy per person. If you're not like just kind of suffering in the exact right way. But then people at the top are like, good grift, bro. Nice job convincing people that that's a thing that they should care about. Capital accumulation is its own reward. Gross. Don't you think you should use your great wealth for the glory of the fatherland? You're a thief. Yeah, basically. It's great you... you isn't it great? Uh, it's great that you've done so well for yourself, but don't you think you should owe that wealth to the rest of society? Cool. I don't even have any interesting replies. Uh... People out there are working their asses off while you chill here. Yep. That's the you're a thief thing. This is what we can refer to as the alienation of labor, which is the idea that if you work, you produce this amount of value with your work, and yet you're rewarded with an amount that is less than the value that you create. It's not one to one. And so like you create a product, for example, and that gets sold, but then like a percentage of that doesn't go to you. In fact, some would say the vast, 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 vast majority of anything you're selling does not go to you. In many cases, it goes to your employer and their employer and their employer and all these people that have like layered themselves in higher tiers that profit off of your work while not being the people that necessarily do the exact labor that you're doing. Increasing layers of managers and CEOs and so on. And there's a whole hierarchy here. And, uh... Like I said, ratios. That idea of ratios between like the United States and Japan and other countries is like there's degrees of like if you're gonna alienate people from their labor in one way or another, like there's levels of fairness that are more or less reasonable than other ones. Uh, but there's a there's often a distressing thing where like the people it's always it's always kind of fucky to think about the idea that like the people who create a particular good in many parts of the world, including ours, uh, can't afford their own uh, copy of said thing that they that they la that they labor to work at all day because there there's such disparity between the value of the thing that they create and the value that they're given for their work that they can't even afford the thing that they're themselves making or producing or gathering or farming in their country. It's like the idea when quinoa prices were so high that people who farm quinoa can't afford to eat quinoa. And it's like, the fuck did you say? It's right there. It can get cartoonish.
It's not great that you've done so well for yourself. You fucking were born into it. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is... Uh, I would... I would Part of me wants to, like, sand the edges off a little bit and, and say, like, don't you owe this wealth to the rest of society? To, like, shouldn't you give back? Uh, but the, uh... I don't like the part where you say it's great you've done so well for yourself. Because it, it implies that he's done anything other than just not catastrophically fail at being born with all the advantages from, from day one. So that's not fun. But you're a thief. People out there are working their asses off while you chill here. And that's what? Unjust? I think it's perfectly just. His tone is ever so slightly less agreeable than before. You're just using your money as its own justification. Listen, Mr. Dubois, I used to be an idealist just like you. But the truth is that we have no objective system by which to measure someone's value other than the market. We should just embrace it rather than resist it. Why do you have to measure people's value, sir? Why are you implying that people have different levels of value? Don't you think that's kind of fucked up? How you think that you're just superior? See, you might have, th you might have thought I was a little on the nose earlier when I was like talking about superior breeding stock. <laughs> but he literally thinks that he's superior. So superior that he's this rich compared to normal people. I'll remind you, as a, I'm a law enforcement officer who's picking up garbage to get 10 cents at a time to pay for the ability to sleep tonight, and I was literally being infringed upon my ability to work my job as a law enforcement officer that's currently on a case because I have to spend a percentage of each day just trying to find the money to survive to the next day, essentially. Like, that's... And then he's bending fucking time, uh, time and space around him at this point. But no, yeah. If you're somebody who succeeds at the market, it's very easy and even fulfilling and uh, self-gratifying to argue that, well, the market is the only way you can deem someone's value. And uh, I'm sure it's not a coincidence that I believe that because of the fact that I am somebody who specifically am deemed to be the winner of said thing. So I guess I'm just the best person. <laughs> that's, that's what he's arguing. That's literally what he's saying. It's not even a fucking interpretation. This is what he's actually saying. And it's just fucking distressing. Because this is what people convince themselves. This is why they, they end up thinking it's okay to just... Uh, it's, it's fine that I have a massive wealth disparity and all the advantages and people around me are suffering while I have a frankly inethical level of wealth where I could spend probably 95% of it to increase the power, increase like the standings in society and actually have an effect on the world while still being obscenely rich because... The thing about the, the the people on this that are on this level, like they can literally have one percent of their current wealth and still be astronomically wealthy, on a scale that's still incomprehensible to most people, while then also having done something with it besides just sit on it like a fucking dragon. The hand, uh, fucking invisible hand of the market. I swear to fucking god. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hate the invisible hand. I hate the stupid fucking Santa Claus thing. Uh, and then you said it. The hand that allocates resources among men is invisible and cruel, but it is steady, measured, and indeed is just. Hey, you just said that it's cruel and just. You know, you see, see, most people would see cruelty as, uh, as unjust? Do you think about the words that you say? Of course you don't, because they're never fucking challenged, because nothing challenges you. Because there's no consequences for anything you ever do in your entire life, so you can say the most asinine shit, and it just never gets questioned. And so you can keep saying it to all of your fucking friends. And, like, all of you already believe it, so no one will question it. Ugh. There's so much to unpack here. He literally called it the invisible hand. The hand is invisible. Yeah. Man, being a high net worth individual sounds great. It is, truly. It al it's almost entirely carefree. 
he nods. It really leaves you time to better yourself spiritually. Wow, that must be nice. Being able to focus on self-improvement. Interesting how you can, like, just fucking lie to yourself all day and pretend that you have anything good going on spiritually while you also convince yourself that you're of superior stock to literally all of society and they don't need your money, they would just waste it by creating more people. <laughs> how unethic- how- 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 what a poor investment. I'm gonna use all this money to increase my spirituality. <laughs> Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. There's something strange about you. What do you mean? His essence seems to signify actual surprise. Well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No, I mean, I can't even see you. It's as, as if something is happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our... with our vice Weissman coefficient. I have to check if this is a real thing or a thing they made up. I s Oh, it auto-completes the vice Weissman coefficient. Oh my... What a wonderfully educational game, is that one of the top results talking about Disco Elysium. That's funny. But there also appears to be a, wi a wise thing. <laughs> the Weissman score is an, effic an efficiency metric for lossless compression applications, which was developed for fictional use. <laughs> It compares both the required time and compression ratio of measured applications with those of a de facto standard according to the data type. It was developed by Saki Weissman, a professor of Stanford University, and Vinith Mishra, a graduate student, as a result of the producers of HBO's television series Silicon Valley. I've never seen that show. About a fictional tech startup. The formula is the following. Where R is the... This might be actually an, an unrelated made-up thing. Or maybe this does have... Hmm. Let's put it in quotes. See how that goes. No. No, once you put it in quotes, the results are pretty much just... Yeah, they all look Disco Elysium related. There's a, a Reddit post that says, has that title, and then there's a V post, and I'm not fucking going there. <laughs> I have a blissfully uh, 4chan free existence. I've actually never been there before. And I'm not planning on changing that. Oh, here we go. The vice Weissman coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1, or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth among that group of individuals. It's been observed that when the vice Weissman coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend, bend around the high net worth of an individual. Fuck. So what's our coefficient? The vice Weissman coefficient for uh, you and this individual appears to be point. Nine 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 eight repeating. Are you telling me that you are so rich the light literally bends around your face? Among other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly single digit billionaire. Really? No, not really. There are actually quite many digits. Kim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who's unusually well dressed for Martinez. In a cargo container, which in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you, my container. Well, you're a rich investor, right? Can I have some money? I don't see how it's appropriate for a representative of the law to ask a wealthy person for money. This shines 
a bad light on the RCM, if you catch my meaning. Come, now, there is not even a scent of corruption here. I am merely being polite, so let me check my pockets. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments in liquid liquidity are enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for coffee machines. Here's three real. Uh, how, how much can you get for this? It gets me almost nothing. That's the idea, my friend. You've got to work for the rest. Do you know what work is? An ironic question. Maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? Concept godly conceptualization? Present a sound investment plan. Fuck. <laughs> Uh We should get back to our investigation. Thanks for the time. Thanks for stopping by. If you ever have an idea you want to pitch me, I'm all ears. Yep. All right, conceptualization. You're my go-to stat. It is blue, right? Pretty sure it's blue. It's, yeah, it's on top of the screen. Where are my conceptualization items? Like, I know I, I think I remember having them. <laughs> well, I'm wearing a white shirt and oh my god, look at how much time. Look at, look at how <laughs> colors bending around them so much that the this, this screen is broken. Oh my god. This is what we've come to. How's conceptualization doing or these days? It's an eight, which is not amazing. At least I don't have any negatives right now, but I don't have any points to spend on it, so here we go. Uh, if business planning were really your strong suit, you probably wouldn't be a cop. Okay, so I've got this idea for a board game. Go on. Brace yourself, it's very high concept. I'm ready. There's a pen and paper game where people all over the world can play with each other using radios. Oh my god, it's literally this it's literally the failed game that we already know about in this game. <laughs> I'm so happy this is happening. Hold on, have we met before? I don't I, I don't think so. You Ben Light. Yeah, on second thought, it couldn't have been you. Your idea reminds me of a group of young men who came to me a long time ago, calling themselves Fortress Accident. The name should have been a red flag. They pitched me on a handful of other investors, me and a handful of other investors, on the idea of a role-playing game that would, in their wor words, change the world. It would have. It, it was a it was a really cool game idea. What happened? Well, at first everything was rosy. The ideas were solid, but they were lacking in, how do I put it? They were lacking the will to get things done. As their financial situation became more desperate, their ideas devolved from realistic to absolute insanity. As their financial situation became more desperate. It's almost like they could have used an investor, you son of a bitch. It's almost like you're the one who let them fucking fail. Even though it means nothing to you. We lost all of our money. High art types never deliver. They're only good for peddling Vulcans or whatever creeps they come up with. I guess the inordinate amount of time they poured into drawing mythical creatures did not generate a return on investment. Wait, where are they now? Nobody knows for sure, but the place can't be pretty. Wow. Did you try to salvage the project somehow? Sadly, when we got there, it was too late. The concert had run out of steam. Only dust remained. What I want to tell you is this. It's a very bad idea. Dead in the water. You seem like a reasonable man, but this is not a reasonable plan. Are you sure you don't want to give those welcomes a little a second go? Absolutely not. Bankruptcy sequence? What? Minus one empathy. Layoff season. Oh, I don't like that at all. 
the bankruptcy sequence. Business loves silence. The second loudest sound in the world eclipsed only by the collective screams of market crash victims. So let me whisper to you, do you feel the veil of the sun god slipping? Are the better days gone? Or are we entering bankruptcy? Is the company going to go down and leave you in the gutter with the rest of the dredges, delivering parcels for soup money? You need some to crisis manage your way out of this. Huh. Bankruptcy sequence. That's a different one. Hmm. We should get back to the investigation. Let's never talk again. Oh, yep, yeah, my money just went back down to 43. It is... It increases and decreases as a factor of my proximity to him, because he bends all of space and time. <laughs> Literally the least self-aware rich person in the history of anything. So much so that all of reality bends around him, and he is... largely indifferent to that fact. <laughs> <laughs> 